Right. So my name is Dorina Castro, and I want to thank you so much for inviting me to the Rotary. I feel very honored. I am not a Rotarian yet, but I just might become one when I get back to Brookline because I've really been inspired by uh, the people here. So I want to thank you so much for inviting me. I came all the way from Brookline, and I'm a little bit nervous whether I'm going to actually get home tonight. So no, I'm, I'm only kidding. So um, how many have a Twitter um, account right now? Okay, awesome. How many of you are logged in right now? Okay. I, Right now, I, everybody log in, make sure you're logged in because the first thing I want you to do is follow me. Not that it's always all about me, but right now it is because I'm up here. So I want you to follow me and let me go and give you my, um, it's right here. So, so let me tell you just a little bit about me. That's my, um, some people call it a handle, a, a username, but I'm Nicastro D. And so if you find me in there, I'm going to go contrary uh, to, the, to the speaker. Tell me again, I'm sorry. Nancy, I'll never forget your name because I have a sister, Nancy. Uh, I, I'm my, just to give you a side, my son worked for LinkedIn for a couple of years. He did. And I got to go to LinkedIn uh, Bring Your Parents uh, Day last year. And I had that really great photograph. And I went and I saw all these kids and they said, you know, that's a great photograph, but it doesn't tell me anything about what you love and what you do. So what I did is I said, well, I love yoga and I really love the beach. So someone said, well, why don't you go over and take a yoga pose by uh, the logo? So I went and I took a yoga pose by the logo and then somebody said, well, why don't you make that your avatar? Because when people see that, they're going to know that you love to practice yoga. And I thought, really? I mean, because, you know, I'm talking to millenniums, right? Because I'm thinking, oh, no, I have to have that head shot and that face. So there's a real balance between how to do that or not, because after sitting here listening to you, I'm thinking, oh my God, I have that. I, I, but I'm thinking, geez, I might have to go back to that headshot. So it's always a balance. You don't know. But uh, so anyways, I'll show you that in a second. So again, have a chance. Um, please follow me, because I'd love to um, follow you, because that's the thing. I'm, a, I'm an open networker, too. So if anybody follows me, I kind of check them out. And I usually always follow people back, because I think that's what it's about. And I would also like to um, say to Nancy that in terms of giving back, that social media is really all about giving back. That if you're coming to social media just to market yourself, that's not what it's about. It's about really sharing your passion and about who you are and what you do and how you bring value to your community because it's always about paying it forward. And that's what's made social media so exciting today. So with that said, let me just jump in so I can get to... Um, I'm not going to talk a little bit, uh, but I didn't tell you that in addition to me being passionate about social media, I'm also a constant contact local area expert. Is anybody here using constant contact? Can you raise your hand if you use constant contact? Oh, then we all have to talk later. <laughs> anyway, because um, constant contact is an, uh, an application I started using probably back in 2004 as, uh, as a consultant and started uh, finding people that were using it and noticed they really weren't using it right. So I wound up getting certified, then I got master certified, and now it's, be it's a part of the repertoire of what I um, use to help my clients. And one thing that I love about it is that it really is that toolkit. And if I was to describe social media, social media is like, a, is like a garden, and you need tools, and you're only as good as your tools. So that's why I use constant contact, and that is it. OK, so what are we going to hear? Why are we here today? Well, I'm here today to talk to you a little bit about Twitter and what is a tweet. But more importantly, it's really about what do you want to say. How many of you really, and be honest, how many of you really want to go on Twitter? Okay, great. So raise your hand. Be proud. Be proud. And so my question would be, why and what do you want to say? Okay? And so, well, let me just say, you're not alone because we all feel as though we need help with Twitter, all, with social media in general. I jumped ahead a little bit. We all feel it. Even those of us that are using it, and there was a woman in the uh, practice that everything changes all the time. You can't let that stop you. You just have to kind of jump into the pool. That doesn't mean you can jump into the shallow water. You'll get to the deep part. But let me just say here, it's important for you to know that there's a lot of networks out there. What you need to know, first of all, is where are your audience? It's more about your audience than it is about you. So I'm here to hopefully inspire you, to let you know that you're not alone, that you're sitting next to people that feel very similar to you, and then if you just jump in and be where you're at and start where you are instead of where somebody else is, you have more of a chance of feeling good about that. So 
All I'm saying is, it's if you're not on Twitter, which most of you, I think, are, and you're not using it, hopefully by tonight, you're going to use it tonight by sending me a tweet. So just so you know, 54% of small businesses need some help with social media and nonprofits as well. So don't think that you're alone here. And in, in, in addition, we have the same. So basically, both nonprofits and small business are feeling very similar in that they're overwhelmed and they need some form of help with social media. So there is a lot out there. Now, I think we talked about Facebook tonight. There was talking about uh, LinkedIn. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about Twitter. And if you look at this as tools, it's a set of tools in a toolbox. And what you need to decide are what are the tools that I want to use based on where my audience is. So if you're dealing with a younger audience and you're trying to grab a younger audience, then you definitely want to be on Twitter. And the remark about Facebook that was is that you, you definitely want to have a Facebook business page. I, I would just say that it's important to have that. But I'm not here to talk about Facebook. So let's say the first question really becomes, what do you want to say? Like, what is it that we want to say? And again, if you're going out there just to talk about your business or just to talk about your nonprofit, you're not going to get a lot of followers. So what I would say is the first thing is 50% should be something that's interesting and entertaining. And the way you can repurpose uh, content today, if for those of you that went to the Hootsuite uh, presentation, there's a way that you can cure, go grab content. You can get it back, and then you can repurpose it. So I repurpose a lot of content that has to do with social media. I, do, I also uh, do inspirational quotes. I try to do, follow people that uh, practice a lot of uh, yoga. So I'm always repurposing quotes and information that I find either entertaining, inspiring, uh, interesting, funny. And that's pre predominantly what I like to post. However, I also try to post 30% of information that's helpful. So anytime that, uh, that uh, Constant Contact comes out with something that I think might be an interesting, whether they share it on Facebook, I always share it. So I'm always trying to make sure that 30% of my posts are something that's going to be helpful and, 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 and interesting to my, to my audience. And then the other thing is you want 20% you want to promote your business or promote the presentations that you're doing or whatever your business is. So before you go out there and you start thinking about what you do want to post and what you do want to present, have a somewhat of a strategy of what that's going to be. And you'd always want to be air on the side of doing uh, less promoting than more promoting. Does that make sense? Does anybody have any questions with that? OK, great. So um, what is Twitter? Does anybody want to give an idea of what they think Twitter is? Uh, please, help me. OK, that's all right. So. OK. Anybody want to help them? Or are you going to make me do all the heavy lifting? Come on, you must be said something. Somebody must have talked about Twitter at some point or another. It could be considered like a post board. Some people consider it like back in the uh, old days of the breaker. Um, remember the CB radios? OK, and you go breaker one, breaker one, here, short and sassy, how are you? OK, well, it's very similar to that, right? Because then everybody's going to come back and say, oh, breaker one, breaker one. I'm a so think about that when you're thinking about Twitter. But what it is, is they've taken that idea and they've put it online. It is a networking service. But what it does is it enables users to send and read simple messages, whether it be as simple as, uh, I just saw something really good in the New York Times. It was a, it was a post on um, a new yoga studio that's opening up. And then what do I do? I send it. And what the URL is, it's a click to the New York Times article. OK, so there I can put. Uh, I can put email, not emails, I can put um, videos in there, I can put pictures in there, and I could put links to other people. So if I wanted to start promoting businesses, I could also pro promote business by going and maybe getting their Facebook page, shortening the link, going over to my Twitter feed, and saying, thank you very much. I really enjoyed meeting with you today. Why don't you follow me on Twitter? So it's basically like that. So it's a way of, of being able to take short messages embed them with certain things like videos and photos, and be able to send them to also registered users that are also using Twitter. So you have to be able to both be on Twitter, and you have to be following each other to be able to see each other's tweets. Does that make sense? OK? So you, you open up a Twitter account. You come up with a login name and password. 
Uh, and then you go out and you start looking for other people that you want to find. So maybe you go out and you start typing in people's names that you know, and as you find them, you ask for them uh, to follow you, and chances are, when I finish this presentation, I'll come looking for each and every one of you if you haven't followed me. I will find you on, yes? So how is it different than Facebook? Oh, well, Facebook, um, it, it's different in that it's a shorter way of getting your message out. It's also different in those who's going to be using it. So what you need to uh, determine is where is your fan base? Where is your audience? Where are they coming from and where are they? Are they spending their time on Facebook? Or are they spending it on Twitter? Or are they spending it on Instagram? And there's ways you can do campaigns to engage them and then find out where they're coming in from. Okay, so it's just another tool in your toolbox of how you're going to wind up engaging people. All right, so let's move on. So how do you set it up? This is, again, in, in the presentation. So if you haven't set it up, I'm not going to go through it now because most of you said that you did. But if you haven't, I added this right from the Twitter business page where how it's going to go step by step in and show you how to create a page, OK? Now, how do you find somebody? So for, you go up to the search box in the Twitter, which I'll show you in a minute. And then basically what you do is you go in. So has anybody gone in and searched Doreen Castro and found me? OK, awesome. Oh, okay, that's great. And so, have you found me and followed me? Even better. Okay, great. So, I promise you I'll follow you back. So, um, all right. So, let me just go through here. So, what is it? It's a social conversation and information sharing platform. It gives you the ability to be able to share information to one-on-one -on -one or one-to-many if you set up lists. What can you use with it? You can link to news. I link to a lot of news, and the Sunday, I, I read the Sunday New York Times, I might read other articles, and if I find articles, I still read them with the paper, I rip them out, then I go, and I find them on, and then what I'll do is I'll actually put them in my feed and send them out. And I don't sometimes think that anybody reads them, and then I'll see some a couple of weeks, and they'll say, you know that article you sent out last week? I really liked it. I said, you actually read it? Oh yeah, I read all your stuff. Great. It gives you more inspiration to do it again. So how often? Uh, there's all kinds of rules on this, but you have to understand that Twitter feeds are fast, and if you're following a lot of people, uh, people it's, they're going through. So if you tweet once a day, chances are, unless there are people, they're on it at that minute, they're not going to see it, or unless they go in and they look up, uh, throughout the day. So the rule of thumb is that you may want to be tweeting five times a day. You go, oh my God, that's way too much. Well, if you went to the Hootsuite uh, session, you know that there are tools out there that make it very easy for you to go in and schedule. And I do that with my clients. Once a month, I meet with them. We talk about what the content is. We go in. We figure out what we want to schedule. And we schedule it out for the month. And then we meet next month. The only responsibility is, is as those things are getting uh, reposted or retweeted or commented, it's their responsibility to make sure they do what? Answer it. Answer it. Comment on it. Otherwise, it's dead air and they don't know where you are or what you're doing. Is that uh, retweet the same thing? Oh, I think retweets are, are, are like a great way of um, knowing that there are people that are following you. And I, I retweet a bunch of stuff. Just because what's happening is if you have people out there that are retweeting your stuff or commenting, I call them your brand ambassadors. Those are the people that either that like you respect you, want to do business with you, and are willing to retweet or willing to repost something you posted. Yeah, I meant the same tweet. Oh, no, that one. I'm not, well, what you want to do is you want to make sure other people are, re are, are retweeting it five times. Maybe not you. No, I wouldn't, spend the f I wouldn't say that that post for five times is the same post. No. It should be five different posts, and hopefully that there are five different people uh, retweeting that. Okay. So you were retweeting could be one of the five. That's right. Oh. That's right. And, it's the fa and, and in many ways, it's the fastest way to reach your audience if they're following you on Twitter, right? So it's a very quick way. And you'll see now, not to get into politics, but you know, Twitter has become like the big place to get the news. Well, what I'll tell my kids that I told them, when just because it's on the internet doesn't mean it's true, <laughs> OK? Just because it's on the internet doesn't mean it's true. So I just want to make that um, point. Would you agree? Do you always, absolutely. Yeah. Do you always I'll go and look at them, but most of the time I do. Because when I travel, what I've noticed is that when I travel, I pick up more followers than when I do it at home in Boston, because I use it uh, to do shout outs to restaurants when I eat. Um, so I use it as a way of, I use it more when I'm out of, 
when I'm um, outside my local sometimes just because I'm not sure where I'm going and then I find something, whether it be a diner and then I you know, want to post about the diner. So then all of a sudden I pick up like three people in Vegas or you know, that kind of stuff, wherever I am. So, and, that, um, and then I've also had people that have followed me and I've do done um, you know, back and forth with them, which I wouldn't have done otherwise. So it's, okay, so building blocks of Twitter. So what I'm doing here is going through and showing you what a tweet looks like. So this particular uh, block here is a tweet. And all it is is it's a message of information that, you, you, that you're putting out there. And the second one there is your way, OK? This is your way to be able to click to a reply that somebody. So when I send, out a, when I send something out, Someone can reply and say, oh, that was really good information. Thank you very much. Oh, that was very funny. Or, uh, you know, that's the way you would reply. So a retweet um, is that what we talked about. It gives you the ability to retweet. So in this particular uh, post, it was retweeted 18 times. 37 people loved it. Okay, so that, that you're seeing that people are engaging with that particular uh, post. So a hashtag is a way of organizing information. So one of my hashtags is, it pays to be social. Because I really believe that it does in many ways, because I even heard it right here tonight. And so I'll go and I'll search on it pays to be social, and I'll see who's using that hashtag. And, so, and I'll engage with that person. So if you don't have a hashtag as part of your organization or part of who you are, you may want to think of one that it is and then start using it as part of your post. Like anybody for tonight, I think the post was, what was Rotary 70? 7910. So anything that you want to talk about about this event, you'd use that hashtag. And then what will happen is you can go back and you, and you search on it, and you'll see all the conversations that were talked about about the seminar. But then you'll also see people. And then you can actually go in and say, oh, I'm going to follow that person. Or oh, I really like that tweet. I'm going to retweet it. And a mention, the mentions are like the best thing, is when somebody mentions you in a, in a, in a tweet. That's basically saying, so at Nicastro D, uh, D thanks, it was a really good presentation, or something like that. that. That's a mention. And then what happens is everybody that follows me, if they're on Twitter at that moment, they're going to see that mention. And some people will like it, and some people might retweet it. Did I go too fast? Is there any, yeah? Like multiple hashtags. You can have multiple hashtags. You see that. Yep. You can have a biking one. It depends on what. So what, what the nice thing that social media has done is it's almost had for you to think about categories of your life. What are the categories of your life? And the thing is, is that they're all blending now. It's very hard to separate them all out. The, um, as again, my son, who's, uh, who uh, was big on LinkedIn, he shuts down all his social media. He always shuts it down when he's looking for a new job. He's never on any social media when he's in the middle of a job search. He just doesn't do it. It's a, he can turn his privacy settings off and everything because he wants to be clean. It's like a new way of how these kids find, find it. But uh, So there's all different ways. Let me go. So any questions on the building blocks of Twitter? So this is a tweet. Those are all the different pieces of that Twitter tweet, OK? Now let's look at what your profile would look like, OK? So um, this is your profile. You're going to have that picture. My picture happens to be the ocean because I, lo I love the beach. And then my picture happens to be of um, me doing that yoga pose. So you know right away you're going to know, oh, she loves the ocean and she loves to do yoga. So right away, your profile says something about you. So right at the at, the username, that's where, they ha that's where people know how to get in touch with you by that username. You also want to have a little character about who you are. Um, that's, that's your profile, that's your, um, what do they call that? That's your bio. And then, of course, you have your headshot, which is what I would consider any headshot that you use, you, you're consistent about it. So, so everybody's going to say, oh, that's Doreen, that's the person in the yoga, or, or, or that's Nancy, because her picture is, whether it's her LinkedIn or her Facebook or her Instagram, it's, it's not like, oh, is that her? I don't know. That's a different picture. So you want to have some branding and be consistent about what that branding is. And you can pin your tweet. So there's that ability to say you had a really good tweet. So one of my exciting tweets for a while was after that LinkedIn, uh, bring your kids to, uh, bring your parents to work, I actually, um, posted a post in LinkedIn, and my son retweeted it, 
and the and the CEO actually retweeted it to his, and so I wound up pinning that to my top of my Twitter feed because I thought, wow, that's about the biggest claim to fame I'm ever going to have, and I want people to be able to see it. So for a while, people were able to see it, and I and I got um, email and I got all kinds of stuff saying, wow, you're the CEO of LinkedIn, um, retweet one of your posts. So that's it. Let me see if I can go through because I really want to show you. So business value, it's the fastest way to reach an audience, particularly if you know who that audience is and you start searching on them and you start following them and you want to send them something really quick. If they're using Twitter, you got them. So stand out with your tweets. Be positive. Be passionate. Be informative. Be funny. Uh, be helpful. Um, and then you use the an analytics, which we probably don't have a chance to get to, but like anything, um, there's always analytics behind it. So what works for, uh, 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 for a, uh, Twitter, a Twitter post? If you have an image, use it. If, that, if, you, if you have a logo, use it. Show what you're, uh, what you're tweeting about. Short tweets are always important because you can do a short tweet with a link, and if they're really interested and they're captured by those first few uh, statements or that few first few letters, then they're going to click that link, and then you can bring them to something that's, uh, which I would say is you bring them to your website because that's the whole strategy. Social media is where you engage them, and then you drive them to your website, and then you have a call to action there, and you measure it. That's what it's all about. That's the strategy. Some people say, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Your basket is your website, because that's the most important thing, because you own it, and it can't be taken away from you. Hashtags. Hashtags are a way of being able to take content and be able to organize it by a particular hashtag. So you see a lot of hashtags out there now as part of whether it be uh, for the marathon that's coming up or an event. People have maybe two or three different hashtags. It's just a way of being able to organize and then going back and searching on it. Okay, being helpful. How is there a way that you can be helpful on Twitter? It's not a trick question. How could you be helpful? Part retweeting somebody else's post by participating. Don't be a lurker. Don't be lurking out there and watching and listening to what everybody's saying and not participate. Your voice matters. This is the time where you can have a voice bigger than you've ever had in your life. So go out there and, be, and, 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 and have that voice. So what do you do? Link to blogs. Link to other experts. Show facts or tips or uh, statistics about something that you're very passionate about. Answer customer questions. So I'm sure there's a, a lot of questions that Nancy answers. Someone comes up and they said, I had a really difficult interview. How do I get over it? And she answers back, I'll meet you at the bar on Thursday. We'll talk about it. Okay? <laughs> so, and then participate in the conversations. Don't be just out there listening. Participate. Say something. All of a sudden, we'll say, oh, I didn't see it that way. That sounds interesting. And then the next thing you know, you start seeing a little a breadcrumb. They followed you on Twitter. All of a sudden, they're on Instagram. The next thing, they're, they're on your Facebook. Got to, okay, got to cut it off. So, all right. Use your, I'm just going through if there's anything else. So, um, use it. Look at your mentions. Look at your top tweets. Look at your engagement. Look at